Hey there, I'm Jens Bogren. We are at Fascination Street Studios and uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of a mix walkthrough of uh, the promo song that we're using for the uh, new drum library from Bogren Digital called uh, Krim Drums in collaboration with the excellent drummer Krim Karim Leshner. promo song that we're using here is the extended version. It's a combination of two songs of Krim's solo album, The Eternal Return. And um, yeah, of course, for the drums, we are using the Krim drums library. And then we have all the other stems here. If you haven't already checked this out to do so, you can download these stems. You can download the MIDI and um, some other gimmicks like tempo maps and whatnot and try to create your own mix using another drum library or maybe Karim drums. Let's check this out. I have a bunch of files here. It's uh, bass, uh, rhythm guitars. Uh, since this is the extended version, there's also a soft part that highlights uh, some other stuff here. Um, if you haven't heard the song, I advise you to do so. You will find it um, just below here. The cool thing about this mix that I did is that it's using the mixer inside the contact drum library of Krim Drums. So for the drums here, I have a, a few different instrument tracks that all goes to uh, a drum master track where there are nothing, no effects, nothing. And for the first section, which is a little heavier riff, I'm going with the internal stuff here and the preset Gen Mumble Pants. And very little changed uh, apart from that preset. I might have written a few faders a little differently. And um, then there is a different part coming up. We can listen to that. For that specific fill, I didn't didn't want it as processed. I wanted it to be to sound as natural and nice as possible. So then I just took that MIDI part and created a new track, put on a new instance of Crim Drums, and I'm using the Party Pants preset instead. And then I've just uh, made sure that I muted uh, any added trig samples from the snare. Uh, I might also have a adjusted the overall room level a little bit to make it sound like as natural as possible. Uh, for the next section, that is a little bit more, I call it the emo uh, section. On that one, I'm using another preset. It's a mumble pants, actually the same as the first one, but uh, on this one, uh, I changed a little bit. So the first heavy track is the Mumble Pan present with uh, plastic beaters, a little bit more metal. Uh, once this emo part comes on, I change this so it's actually the old head preset, which is a little bit duller, sounds like an old drum head. That's the main difference between those two. A little bit more reverb, I think, as well, uh, on the drums. Uh, and then it goes down to this really soft part that is not in the promo video, but it's part of this extended version that we have here that you can download the stems for. And for this, I wanted as uh, natural sound as possible. So I created a new track, and there I'm using the El Natural starting preset, which has no uh, extra mix effects or anything. It's like very raw 
sounding. It's not raw sounding maybe, but it is uh, no added stuff uh, in the, uh, the crim mixer here. Uh, it's just the way I sampled the drums. And then it goes over to this little uh, soft uh, blast beat parts that is also not a part of our promo song, just a part of this extended version. With some blast beats over clean guitars. Not every day you hear that, it's cool. Uh, for that one, I also created a new version um, of the plugin, new setup. It's also the El Natural with a little bit of just modified um, overall compression and um, EQ. I might have also changed something with the, a little bit more room and the bleed control for that one. In general, pretty mild changes. And then it goes over to the very end of the song where I'm actually going back to the more metal one again. You can listen to that transition. Something like that. So that's all I'm doing here. Uh, it's all part of those presets that you can get with uh, Crim Drums. Um, if I would like send this off to external mix or get this in, I suppose I would have had in the individual tracks printed. But um, for um, this promo song, I wanted to actually be faithful to the product that we are having here and uh, I wanted to challenge myself and only use uh, the Crim Drums actual mixer uh, without anything added and uh, that's what I'm doing using my own presets for it. Uh, this whole mix chain with the bass, with the guitars, uh, some lead guitars and some keyboards, some effect tracks that we have going for this track uh, those are going out to my summing mixer that I have here uh, as my control room and the sum of that is going to a solid state logic x logic uh, compressor for that little bit of british glue on the total thing um, i could have used the software thing for that as well but that's sort of my standard mix chain here at fascination street and then i have a like one db lift in the uh, very top end uh, on an analog eq that i usually like to use post the output transformers of my summing mixer uh, and the compressor. And that comes back into the mix input here. And there I do have a little bit more EQ. So the stuff you're hearing now, including the drums, has been affected by, uh, by this, uh, which I think is, um, is good. Otherwise, if my mix couldn't take a little bit of a treble lift that you usually have to do, um, of the main mix, then my presets for the drum, uh, the crim drums instrument would probably have been too bright. Hopefully I have dialed them in uh, good enough. I've been um, building those presets and testing them over time um, before we created the final uh, instrument for you guys. So um, on here I do have a little bit of a pretty typical thing, like when you mix things in, even if you are careful while blending the tracks and uh, individually mixing different uh, channels here. Um, it's pretty typical that you have like build-ups um, in the fundamental frequencies of many of these instruments like guitars and uh, whatnot. So I'm a little bit of a low end and low mid roll off. There's a little bit of a mid push there that is more maybe for YouTube videos in mind than uh, like album sound uh, to make it easier to come through on a, on a phone or, or whatnot. I'm also having uh, another EQ here, uh, the ePure. Um, those are pretty mild changes. You can see uh, it's like 0.1 dB here in the very treble, 0.58, <laughs> around 7K. So uh, pretty small, small changes. Uh, and then I have an EQ here. It's not doing much, but it's an MSEQ uh, from Flux ePure. I have it configured uh, as a mono stereo matrix thing. Uh, that might be a little bit advanced for some of you guys, but uh, it's basically EQing the side channel a little bit different from the mono channel. So that way, by putting a little bit extra around 180 
and here around 4.5k in the side channel only, it sort of widens my mix just a tiny bit uh, without it going completely overboard. Again, very small changes, 0 0.25, 0 0.3. So that's it, that's all I have on the master. We're also listening through just uh, like an end limiter that will sort of help me understand what's gonna happen when mastering the track, because this is all unmastered, what we're listening to here now. Um, and uh, I usually do that, I listen with the limiter and then I remove it, uh, I don't print with it. Uh, and then when I come to the mastering stage, I sort of start over without a limiter and that way I can sort of do whatever tweaks I need to do to get the the track to to um, come come up in volume without suffering a great defeat for the snare front uh, all right so let's just have a little listen here from the from the top we have this uh, riff going with a few added uh, lead guitars and keyboards Those guitars that I have here uh, are on these two channels. You can see that I don't have panned them fully, and that's again one of these YouTube things. Usually when mixing for album or full release, I would pan this fully to get the full sound. But uh, since I know that a lot of people would watch this uh, promotional video on like handheld uh, devices and phones and whatnot, I sort of prefer to not go full pan because that will affect the perceived volume if you listen to something in mono. Because still to this day, a lot of uh, phones are playing back in mono. So that would sort of just take away that little, a little bit of that guitar decrease for some, for some listeners. Otherwise, I'm not doing very much here. Uh, I'm doing a low cut on those guitars on the DI, and then I'm using the Bogan Digital Rev C one knob, which is a very, very nice um, guitar amplifier that I've been using in, in actual mixes um, on a lot of projects. Uh, this is going to a um, rhythm master track where I have a nice uh, Neve EQ kit plugins which is barely doing anything, to be honest. Uh, it's more adding a little bit of harmonics in there and a little bit of EQ, low cut to give a little bit more space for, uh, for the crim drums and uh, for the bass. Since this is a pretty metal thing, I wanna edge it a little bit in the top end, remove a little bit uh, low end, low mid kind of thing. Pretty standard stuff. Then I'm also using a vitamin plugin here from Waves that is uh, some sort of exciter kind of thing, which uh, would also add a little bit extra harmonics uh, into it. Uh, it's a pretty common thing. I usually do that across different groups of instruments, like uh, I have my rhythm guitars here. And uh, for lead guitars, I have another group over here. Uh, let's see where it is there, leads, master. Goes out to a separate stereo channel on my summing mixer here. And for that one, I'm using an ozone exciter kind of thing. Very tiny changes here, but a little bit of a lift in the high mids and, and highs. Instead of just EQ that, if you do it with some sort of um, exciter or like this guy over here, that's in on my keyboard master, uh, Afix Oral Exciter. A very similar kind of thinking between all these uh, uh, three uh, plugins. Uh, where you basically would distort certain frequency bands and then mix it back into the signal. So you would get an energy increase and new harmonics that will make it sort of sweeter sounding and easier to get through the mix without necessarily EQ it up. We'll have that same effect, but it will be a different result. So that's something that I tend to not use the same. I want to like have different characters for different instrument groups. That way they sort of fill their own spaces in the mix a little easier. And for the bass, and that one is going here. Uh, on that one I have some gimmicks that I usually use. I have three different bass tracks, I should say. There's one for the heavy parts, there's one for this uh, finger style. 
and one for the fingerstyle where he goes a little more play. And then the more metal one. And here I'm again a little lazy with this mix where I wanted to challenge myself and uh, try to use uh, like more common door warrior kind of uh, stuff. Uh, I have stuff here I could reamp and do whatever, but instead I've been using these uh, products that I've crafted based on, on those stuff that I usually use. So for the bass I'm using this bass knob STD uh, classic uh, with a dirt channel, uh, which is a very, very fast and excellent sounding um, plugin for to get a really nice sort of Ampeg style rock metal bass to sit in the track like super fast and super good. Then there is some added stuff here like um, listen to the arrangement courtesy of uh, Federico Scari who did a great job with helping out with some of these arrangement uh, IDs. So this is um, one of these things from uh, from Federico, guitar-based uh, tremolo kind of thing. I've uh, spiced it up with one of my favorite distortion plugins called the Decapitator from Sound Toys. Um, that's also, again, one of the, these things that I usually do. If I have something and I have a little trouble getting it through, or if I mix it in, it starts to sort of steal too much uh, fundamental frequencies in the mix, um, like in the low mids and mids. So instead of EQing that away and maybe get a thin and uh, spiky result, I would try to add harmonics or distort it. And that way I create new harmonics, I get a sweeter, more even frequency response and it just pops. So it's sort of, you can see it as it's crushing the um, um, where the sound has its most energy, usually in the low mids uh, and lows, and then it sort of converts that into harmonics instead, so they become audible, and it doesn't take so much space in the mix. I have some other effects here, for example, for the clean guitars. These are Crim's own recorded guitars that I got DIs from, uh, and again, instead of reamping, I decided to try to do everything in the box here. So I'm actually using this. Um, uh, archetype uh, Pliny thing that uh, I think uh, is a very nice plugin. And uh, at the same time, there's another guitar playing. Um, let's see that one. A little bit more of a crunch thing. So I have this uh, archetype going with the clean channel and um, another Pliny archetype. And for this one, I want a little bit different character, uh, something that could come in and, and grab and be a little edgier. And there I'm using an external IR called Beefy B2 from um, a Bogan Digital release that's called the uh, Cleans and Lead Pack, uh, Jens Bogan signature that I tend to reach for quite often for, for the cleans and lead stuff. There's no vocals here. Usually vocals is a big part of the mixing and the way the instruments interact uh, around vocals. So this is a pretty straightforward track and the, uh, the, the, the stems, uh, as you can hear if you did download them. If you didn't already, go ahead, do it. Take the opportunity and check the stuff out. Uh, the tracks from Federico were all very nicely organized. And to be honest, I haven't had to do so much to it. There are a few other things here, like um, some adder percussion. For example, drums that are not a part of the uh, uh, drum library, the crim drums. Uh, on these, I'm using uh, Altiverb, Bob Clear Mountain, um, IR that I used to like deplace them a little bit. So without and with. 
just like a tiny space difference that makes them interact with my drums that has uh, quite a lot of room on them a little better. And then it's all about balancing and, and volume riding, making sure that everything has its space. You can see here on my automation curves for the clean guitars, for example, how I go in and um, as soon as I need something to jump up and take a focus, I would ride it up um, and do whatever is needed, basically, volume-wise. You can also see my master track on the rhythm guitars, how for these palm mutes I bump them up uh, if there's nothing else in the arrangement at that time that takes focus. Um, and whenever they're supposed to have focus, they would come up. Um, I should show you one more thing here about the bass. Um, the bass DI tracks, all three of them, are routed to a bass master. And here um, I'm using like a C6 from Waves which is um, containing the lows a little bit, make uh, Crim's own drummer slash bass player playing a little bit more even. And I'm also taming the, the highs a little bit and boosting at the same time um, with this frequency band here. Basically increase like a shelving filter from here and then hold it back with the help of uh, that compressor that will sort of bring forward the um, attack of the bass playing without going completely uh, overboard. Um, I'm having this uh, little trick as well where I'm using a CLA bass plugin from Waves uh, that has um, yeah, a very <laughs> unique sound, I would say. Uh, it uh, sort of scoops the bass in a way that um, um, is usually too much, but it's, it's a very nice, like, cool, album sounding kind of uh, thing it has going. Uh, but uh, there's no way to decrease it, like even if you have everything off here, it will do a lot. So what I usually do, uh, I'm in Pro Tools, so I would load this up inside a shell loader, like this uh, Blue Cats patchwork, and then I use the mix function to sort of write it back. Because this one has some uh, really nice things in terms of... Um, If I would ride the mix up 100%, uh, it has a stereo chorus kind of thing. I quickly can get too much, but if you use just a little bit of it and also decrease the mix of the overall uh, plugin, you get a little bit of a deep placement again on the bass that makes it just sound a little richer and fuller. And it also has uh, three different distortion characteristics. The raw one here is a very, very good sort of rock metal type of distortion that uh, crunches the mid uh, together and really lets it sit well in the track. Now I already have a nice growling distortion in the uh, bass knob here in the dirt channel, but I usually like to stack this on a little bit. Then there's also a nice compressor in the push mode, gives the bass a nice punch. So a little bit of all this just mixed in to like 25, 30 percent or something. We'll give that a little extra icing on the bass. And then there's a little bit of this L3 going out on the end, just to shave off some resonances. If the bass player is playing not completely perfect all the time, there could be some almost like standing waves and some notes and those gets to ring a little bit. And instead of trying to catch them with EQ and change the frequency response, I could sort of shave them off dynamically by using this uh, L3 limiter. And that way the bass track sits really nicely uh, below the, uh, the drums and guitars. That's pretty much it. That's sort of the stuff that could um, fit in to uh, one of my mixes for a track like this. Like I said, this time I challenged myself and um, wanted to use as much as um, virtual instruments and plugins uh, as possible. 
So apart from my little chain here with a 1dB uh, treble lift, uh, my solid state logic compressor on the main bus, the British glue, just a tiny bit gain reduction, you know, just like a dB or so. Uh, it's all down here in the box. And for the drums, it's all inside the um, Crim Drums mixer. So please go ahead, download the stems yourself, see what you can do with the mix. Use another library, use Crim Drums, uh, whatever. The uh, link to the download is in the description below this video. And uh, I'm really looking forward to check out what you guys can create.